The European Space Agency's Euclid Telescope is ready for launch from Cape Canaveral, embarking on a mission to shed light on dark matter and dark energy, the constituents thought to make up 95% of the universe. Euclid will depart planet Earth on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket heading for an orbit a million miles away to begin a mission lasting at least six years, scanning more than a third of the sky with unique wide-field cameras. The mission will return huge volumes of data, totaling more than 100 petabytes, that could take many years for astronomers and cosmologists to analyze in search of clues about the mysterious forces that rule the universe. Dark matter has never been directly measured, but scientists think it makes up a little more than a quarter of the universe. Dark energy, on the other hand, constitutes about 70% of the cosmos, and according to the models, are, is responsible for accelerating the universe's expansion. We had an opportunity to visit the telescope inside a clean room near the launch site in Florida and visit with Giuseppe Rocca, Euclid's project manager. Euclid uh, that we see here in these uh, facilities of uh, Astrotech uh, in, near Cape Canaveral is uh, a cosmology mission and the target, uh, the objective is to uh, study the dark universe we co as, as called. Uh, we know that the universe is made primarily of stuff that cannot be seen. Let's say 95% is made of dark energy and dark matter together and we are only about 5% of all what uh, exists, let's say, is made of normal matter. Euclid will uh, really uh, target the uh, dark energy and dark matter. In order to come up with any meaningful result, astronomers want Euclid to observe about 15,000 square degrees of the sky, primarily in the north and south, while avoiding the brightest parts of the sky populated with light from our own galaxy and solar system. The way to do it, of course, since cosmology is a matter of the entire universe, so you need to really make observation of a big part of the sky. So, and that's one of the main features of Euclid is indeed that it can make observation of a very large part of the sky, which is actually about 36% of the full sky. Euclid's telescope is about half the size of the primary mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope, or about 18% that of James Webb. While that means Euclid won't be able to study galaxies as old and distant as Hubble or Webb can see, Euclid has the benefit of seeing a broader swath of the sky. Think of it as trading a telephoto lens for a wide-angle lens. To compare, Hubble Space Telescope has a much narrower field, and to Hubble to do the job of Euclid, it would take hundreds of years. The team working on Euclid at the launch base in Florida had to take extra measures to keep the telescope free of contaminants. Dust or hair could ruin the mission if they settled onto the telescope's mirror or detectors. We visited the clean room just before the cover to the telescope was removed for the last time prior to launch. Uh, one peculiarity of this spacecraft is that it must be very clean because everything, every particle that is deposited inside the telescope it could scatter light. Euclid will see billions of galaxies back to 10 billion years ago. One way it will help cosmologists seek clues about dark matter and dark energy is by measuring how the galaxy's shapes have been distorted by unseen material accumulated in the vast expanse between the galaxies and the telescope making the observation. This is called weak gravitational lensing. By looking at how the, the normal matter is distributed, you can uh, infer how much dark matter is uh, in there. Cosmologists believe the expansion of the universe was slowing down after the Big Bang more than 13 billion years ago, but now the universe is accelerating its expansion, contradicting what we know about the relationship between matter and gravity. Scientists have labeled the force driving this expansion as dark energy. If you look with models, you, you think that this should have started about five, six billion years ago. At the very beginning of the universe, this wasn't the case. Let's say at the beginning of the universe, it was actually expanding, actually less and less. It was st still expanding, but less and less, so decelerating. Then, apparently, this starts to, uh, to become, instead, uh, an acceleration about 5 billion years ago. And uh, Euclid uh, observes the last 10 billion years, exactly for this reason, to cover the time. What has happened that this made it changes from, a, 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 let's say, an expansion which was stopping and to an expansion which is forever increasing. 
Rene Laure, Euclid's project scientist, says there's a chance Euclid's observations don't match with existing cosmological models. We compare the model in such a way that we can understand, or at least see, uh, how well this model predicts the properties of dark matter as well as dark energy. If these predictions, to a certain accuracy, are not fulfilled, then we have something new in hand. Um, then we can say, well, uh, Euclid is so precise that the predictions we have at the moment cannot be uh, uh, reconciled with, uh, with, with our observations. And then we have maybe something new in hand in terms of physics.